And good afternoon and welcome to the Amna Championships. Coming to you from the Bendat Stadium here in Western Australia. Another game of our men's open about to get underway. West Australia, the hosting side, will take on Victoria. Sue Gordian, my name, and a great pleasure to be at the Amna Champs and watching some of the great talent of our men's game unfold in front of our very eyes. And, of course, joining me, one of the greats of the game. Well, he calls himself that. <laughs> that that's what he told me <laughs> off camera. But anyhow, Matty Blomley joins me, former 23 and under Australian coach. So he's got the coaching nows, but comes from a player background as a Victorian Open player. And, of course, not that his bias will enter this game, but he is the current president of the Victorian Men's and Mixed Netball Association. A big welcome to you, Matt. Big game ahead. Oh, it's going to be a very exciting game. If Western Australia can produce what they did for three quarters earlier in the week, day two, I think this is going to be an absolute ripper of a game. Victoria, lucky to come away with the result last one. You're right. It was a 46-41 to Victoria. 46-41 victory, should I say, to Victoria. Five goals. WA, a very slow start. 9-1 down, I believe it was, uh, early in the opening quarter and had to fight their way back. So 60 minutes, four 15-minute quarters to unfold in front of you. Of course, the Vicks in the blue with ball in hand. And WA in the yellow and black. And Brady Roberts straight into the thick of it in a goal attack. Australian men's player. Cowling, wing attack for Victoria. Good defensive pressure from the West Australians early. Riley Richardson under pressure at the top. So the intensity unfolding in front of our eyes. Expect that for the next 60 minutes as Cameron Allen lines up the first goal for the Vicks. Yeah, Vix will be looking to go through Cam a fair bit, target down there, but expect Brody Roberts to have an impact on the scoreboard as well. Rawlings and Gilbard. Young Connor Rawlings in at centre. Just had a chat with him before the game, asked how he was enjoying it. He said he's absolutely loving playing up with the big boys. And did very well in the last match between these two as well. So, bounce pass down the line. Punching and Cowlings. Dan Cool's out hunting. Little tap of the ball. Richardson with the scraps. This defensive pressure, incredible from Western Australia. Really stepped it up. The talk, feet, they've come out with intensity. They're not wanting that same result as last time. So day four of the Amna Champs right through to the finals unfolding on Friday and Saturday this week. Plenty of streaming netball for you to watch. Dylan McPherson having to run the role of goal attack. More likely, or used to seeing him in the centre roll. Quick little give and go around the circle edge. A yeah, little bit of mounting call there on it, Al Punchman. Got to be careful, Jerome, very smart again underneath. So the penalty to be set under the ring. McPherson, the smallest in the ring, and lines up the first goal for the West Aussies. Of course, the key for Western Australia will be staying with the Vicks early on. Yeah, with the ball movement that Victoria can do, they've got to be very careful that they don't drop off that intensity that they've started so strongly with. They've had a good look at each other, these two sides. Uh, Victoria men's side coming over to play against the WA men's in the opening part of the season. Nice fly from Byron. Yeah, seem to be out there for days, Byron. Third pocket swings to top. Rawlings backspace to Gilbert, preferred choice, and of course, real estate under the ring for him. It's a miss. Great contest for the rebound, and the Vicks come up with it. Very interesting footwork, Gilbert. Then, I think that's what put off his shot. So quick into attack, Richardson wanted it in the middle. Instead, they use the depth and a quick offload from Jaden Cowling. Gee, that was impressive transition. From They've Victoria. Clearly recognise that the hands could be a big issue in that circle. So trying to take the hands out of the action, take it out of the air. So a little break early for the Vicks. Richardson again sights the circle. Begs the question of the umpire on obstruction. The whistle goes. Brody Roberts. Oh well. Hits the front. Draven Lee Tarua, the big rebound. Wants to get on with it. The big cross-court ball. Gee, it was there for the taking. Melmo. Oh, how did he come from on court then? That was a very impressive footwork. So from the lead Tarua 
intercept at one end. It's a shot under the post that's missed by McPherson. Victoria again. Good patience. He wants to punch it. You can see really conscious hands over pressure from Western Australia in this match. Obviously, a conversation they had, they need to put a lot more intensity with that aspect of their game as well. Van Cools, goal defence for WA. Just called for feeling contact on the Victorian shooter. So a 4-1 start to the Vicks. Maybe a little bit of a familiar feel for the West Aussies from that day two game. Definitely got a score here, Western Australia. Otherwise, well, as we say that. Footwork called. McPherson just checking with the umpire. So a couple of steppings early in the first five minutes of this game. Victoria certainly controlling things at the moment. Melmo, good take. Cross-court ball, though. And it's replayed ball. Almost handed it off anyway. Gilbard was there, wasn't he? So you mentioned, Maddie, they need to score here, the West Aussies. They get another goal at it. It's got it. You want to score on this one because otherwise the momentum is really going Victoria's way. And how do you get that back? McPherson. Again, we'll line up. Missed the last one. Steady's on this shot. Falls at the front. And the big rebound. He'll be disappointed with himself there, Dylan. Puts a lot of pressure on there as one of the leaders of the group. Certainly very animated, isn't he? You know about it when he's not happy with his form. he never been able to hide an expression, <laughs> McPherson. <laughs> well known for it. Good, bad or ugly. So Malmo through Richardson. Brody Roberts on the drive, so... No contest coming from the West Aussies at this point, but then Dan Cools reads, reads that moment. Did very well there defensively. Put absolute doubt in the mind. Not a clear feed. Burton. McPherson. Heard was free but ignored, so they go backwards. Good pressure from Victoria. Just owning that middle corridor, forcing... West Aussies out wide eventually, though, along the baseline. Yeah, so calm. Cool. Jerome with that one. And they find their way in the NG. That was quite a few minutes to find a goal. Just their second on the board. 4-2 the score halfway through this opening quarter. Very low scoring. Roberts swings. Last match started quite slow scoring as well until Victoria started pushing that out a little bit. A lot of defensive pressure across the court from both teams. I dare say we're going to see something similar. A very mm. low scoring match. Oh, lovely triangle play. The swing to Richardson. Baseline opens for Roberts. Very skillful from the Victorians. Jason Hurd. Begging Covered for him. someone to come to him. Yep. Putting Gilbert under pressure there, wasn't it? Josh Byron. Something he's very well known for back in his Australian defensive days and his New South Wales defensive days, getting up there over the shot. So sending backwards. Again, Melmo punching. Just reliable, aren't they, in bringing ball through court. Eventually it opens up. Allen out the side. And looking away from the mess. That was a clear that you don't often see a shooter on opposite side come out. Well, the quick give and go spoiled by Lee Tarua. Roberts hustling. It opens up the front space. Clever patience from Riley Richardson, but the ball doesn't drop. It'll be a West Australian throw in. Yeah, that's unfortunate timing there. That would have been crucial for Victoria helping push out a lead. Great opportunity here for the Thunder. So you can see the pressure, just the offline defence through the middle here from Victoria. Well, very Pools. lucky there, Stewie yeah. Burton. <laughs> Did well to find the body, but then just the hands. Well, terrific defensive pressure. Oh, this Australian's just unable to penetrate through the middle. Gilbard comes up and is covered. McPherson now goes to the pocket. There'll be a contact on Richardson. So... 
great defensive structure by the Victorians. Interesting goal in set up there, West Australia. Really both on top of the ball, not giving much space. Well, McPherson, he'll certainly smile surely on that shot. Rectified the last couple of misses, and all of a sudden, WA back to one there, centre pass. Gilbard, lovely play, nice offload, finds McPherson. And we are all tied up with 5.40 to go in this opening quarter, five apiece. Yeah, Josh Byron had no idea McPherson driving the baseline there. Just caught very flat. Draven, incredible moment. This is what we're talking about. We know that he can do that, and I expect to see much more of that as the game goes on. Don't be afraid to see Cools get a couple either. So the reward now, McPherson just hanging out wide, a quick give and go. A lead through a goal off the hand, and McPherson drops, and the West Aussies hit the front. That's four in a row for the Thunder. This is an absolute momentum shift. McPherson out on the first phase, so his work rate's gone up, and then just a missed ball. A little bit on the backside, wasn't it, of Connor Rawlings? They would be disappointed with that. As they're really building up momentum, you can see Lorraine Ward on the side. Stand up, having a go at her team to get up and get in there again. Keep right. the intensity. Absolutely. The coach of WA Thunder in Lorraine Ward. Certainly very animated from the side of the court. Pressure coming. Good vision. Well, the vision was correct. It was the execution of pass. And this West Richardson. Australian crowd is going off at any turnover at the moment. Imagine if these teams play each other in a grand final, what this crowd will be like. Heard to Rawlings through the middle, back again. And then McPherson, just the work right out the front of Gilbart. Well, stepping up to the post, a miss. Much needed goal, though, wasn't it, for the West Aussies? Just to hold their momentum. The Vicks now the opportunity through court. How nice to see Rawlings in that centre. It's so patient on his feed. Just waiting for someone to open up, not forcing anything. Don't think he's thrown a bad pass. As we speak about bad passes, Cowling caught in the overhand. Victoria is struggling in attack at the moment. Maybe time for a change. 5-6 the score. The Vicks led 4-1 early. And WA have worked their way back. 3.30 to unfold. The opening quarter. Stewie Burton, wing defence for the Thunder. Gilbert out top, so McPherson will sweep the base. Yeah, Riley Richardson knew he was a little bit late on that attempt, but just trying to slow it up for a moment. Give himself a chance to settle down the defensive end, maybe the attack end as well. And so the biggest lead of the game now, only by two for the West Aussies. Well, not the biggest lead of the game for them, should I say. Of course, big lead by four early on. Wanting a forward movement. You can see Callum just sitting nicely and patiently at the baseline, but the pressure's all up court. That's a better drive and sweep from Roberts. And a clearer setup from Victorians there. Consciously hit the circle edge before the feed. Especially after you've thrown a couple of long balls away, you've got to make sure you've got that safe circle edge feed. Third out, second option. Gilbart on the lead now. Plenty of time. McPherson, strong take under pressure from Josh Byron. Certainly showed that the contact occurred. You've got to let him know sometimes. Well, you've got to rip the ball in. Don't ever leave it out for question by an umpire. You never know what the whistle will or won't do. It's a nice fifth goal for him. Doing a bit of the workload down there. You normally expect that from Gilbert. Punch and forced to go backwards. Opens up the far side through Richardson. Big long ball. Well, ambitious at best, and it falls to Lee Tarua. So another chance here for the West Aussies. Chris, cross-court ball, that will that one. And you can always rely on punching to get hands to something just when you need it. Need that option down the line, both sides, don't they? Being forced to go across court. Heard. Over the top, finds Gilbert off the deflection of Byron. 90 seconds to play here. McPherson doing that, a lot of the shooting load. That mid-range shot is the one that's more suited him. Under the post, he struggles a little bit with his action. Gets a beautiful arc from about halfway out. 
Oh, look at the three ball play from McPherson to Gilbard to McPherson under the post. The one that we said he may struggle with and he finds his way and in a blink of an eye, Thunder out by four, a minute on the clock. Another three in a row for Thunder. This is how you build leads. Keep getting those one, two, three in a row. Robert steps on, swings ball. Under pressure was Jaden Cowling. Contact will be the call on Stewie Burton. Yeah, Burton's very smart at knowing when to get some of those contacts just to slow it up a little bit. Never looks like it's deliberately slowing, no, but he, very, a, very smart. Yeah, but he is clean in his process, isn't he? Like, in general, so... Yeah, there's nothing dirty about the no. approach he does it in. It's fantastic yeah. attempts, realistic attempts as well. 30 seconds on the clock here. A chance to score. I oh, to utilise the clock. Pulls and Burton. Again, Burton. And then a good little hand in from Roberts. An important deflection that needs the reward at the post. Riley Richardson driving down court. Gets the depth on the baseline to Cameron Allen. Snuck through somewhere there. Absolutely. And a big goal for the Victorians. As the siren goes for this first quarter. And whilst the Vicks led early 4-1. to one, it was the West Aussies that fought their way back through the quarter. A low-scoring quarter it was at that, but as we go into the first break, it's WA Thunder leading by two. Welcome back to the Amna Championships as WA and Victoria are going head-to-head -head here on day four. Quarter time and a very low-scoring game, but a very close one at that with the West Australians leading by two. And a big shout-out to some of the Victorian sponsors in DMAC Apparel, Inspire Sports Crew, Metro Plumbing and the Vimna Junior M League, all part of getting this Victorian side and sides. The mixed and the reserves and the under-23s all over here to be a part of this championships in WA. Just the one change has occurred for Victoria here. We've seen Al Punchin take a seat for a moment and Jake Hedricks, one of the leaders of the group as well, come on in goal defence. be interesting to see how that defensive change works for them. Yeah, would you have picked that change? I don't think it's a bad change. Hedricks is more of a grinder along the ground and they've probably done that as a match-up on Dylan McPherson. Al Punchin known for flying through the air a little bit more. Well, Malmo was the one that flew on that occasion. And 
comes away with the scrap, so straight into it. Then was Hendricks. There he is. He's newly on to the court. Richardson, the quick give and go with Roberts. Really tough angle, that one. Brody Roberts got himself closed off. Cools did so well at turning the body around. It's tough ball in, Richardson to Allen. So Heard into the centre. Just the positional switch, isn't it? With Connor Rawlings in it. Wing attack. And I'm glad to see Rawlings staying on the court. He had a ripper first quarter. Had a ripper last game against him. No fear there. Roberts. Cameron Allen just using that middle corridor. And then a little touch and outside hand from Cools. The scraps, though, again to Victoria. Rawlings back down the line. So good defensive pressure. I was glad to see them go for the kick back there rather than forcing a ball. Although that one not coming off. They well, did force a few too many balls in that first quarter. I was just interested in that. I'm not sure why Callum... Sorry, Cameron Allen decided to offload that ball. He was under the post. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit of awareness of where he landed. Yeah. Someone needs to say to him, turn and shoot. Mm. So Burton drives hard to the line. Gilbert out. That'll give McPherson the circle to create and craft at the front. Yep, and you can see McPherson yep. working a lot harder than he was. Not finding the space quite as easily. Well, I watched McPherson play last night, I and mean, I felt that he spent most of the time offloading ball to Gilbert. Today, he's certainly taken on his role to shoot at the post. Yeah, the first game between WA and Victoria saw McPherson probably early be the dominant one, and Gilbert come into it, which is not what you'd expect. You'd expect Gilbert to be the dominant the whole time. Maybe it's a conscious effort from the side to take some pressure off Gilbert. I don't think we should take anything away from the defence of the Victorians either. They are smothering Gilbert on every moment, forcing McPherson to take the shot. Yeah, literal world-class defender in Josh Byron against him. People may have forgotten about him because he had a couple of years away from the game. Hasn't lost a bit. Roberts sneaks out to your right of screen, swings around. That trademark left-hand yeah, swing. Then the contest in the air. Well, Lee Tarua was turned inside out, but it was a contact call. The use of the elbow from Allen. So Thunder into attack. Great vision down court. Tarua. So much patience from Rawling again. D saw McPherson, but didn't force it. Good, strong drive. Heard, and again with McPherson. So the Victorians are going to have to be very careful here. They can't afford to leave McPherson too free because he is the playmaker at the moment. And that's another three goals to them in a row. Pocket, the swing, quick offload. Terrific play from Roberts. We've seen so much of that in the last few years. People saw it in the Trans-Tasman series and again this tournament already. Nice little flicks. Outside the circle, penalty. Melmo. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say, that was a really well-executed pass, wasn't it, from Rawlings into the back space. Plenty of space to still pick it up. Nowhere near the goal line. And another one for McPherson. So out by four. After leading by two at the quarter-time break. In the air for the contest. <laughs> having Lee left to the ruin. Begging. begging the absolutely begging for him. We're going, please. God, that was mine. Well, Gets they, it back. They eventually get there in the end. They do. Stewie Burton, some terrific scrapping for the ball. He's so underrated there, Stewie Burton, as well. Quiet achiever. He's not a glory player by any means. Doesn't often go for flying insects, but gee, he grinds down players. New dad. Did not know that. Mm. Congratulations to Stewie and his family. Heard McPherson again, sweeps the front. No call on the contact. The penalty reset. Well, just the swing back there, Graham. A little bit of exaggerated arm. Yep. I don't think that was deliberate. I think he was just trying to get his own footing, but certainly not natural body position. So I need to make the most of it here, Victoria. Conversion required through court. Again, forced to go backwards twice in a row, Melmo with Byron. 
Just wanted someone to punch through, Victoria. Well, Hendricks was just sitting out wide. I think they need a bit more from him in that moment. Cross court rulings. Brody Roberts eventually, that last moment of sweeping. And then the perfectly executed shot at the end. Yeah, I'd like to see a bit more involvement from Riley Richland coming back top. He's getting himself a little bit wide as well and cowling deep in that pocket. So blow for blow here at the moment through this second quarter. A couple of goals sneak out by the West Aussies and then it's just end-to-end -end stuff. Richardson sets the penalty with Roberts. Got to give that earlier. Draven Lee to Rowan nearly got hands to it because he can get around. We know how good he is. We've seen it televised for Australia. Yes, correct. It's there in the end. So three goals, the difference. Just keep your eye on Hendricks here, the goal defence for Victoria, just to see his work rate on McPherson. So first. much early work going on. Him and Melmo both doing a lot at the line there, well before the ball even is close to the centre pass. Well, they've isolated McPherson, and it's a wayward ball from the West Aussie wing attack. So a chance here for Victoria. How did that get through with it? It was such beautiful hands. Somehow falling in Alum's hands. A terrific rebound attempt, Alum. Contact cool. was the call on cool. So they get one back the... Victorian men's side. Yeah, Cools wasn't sure that he didn't take it cleanly there. There was some great attempts. And there you go, into the post. And the big finish from Allen just rubbing it in the face, wasn't he? That's a return. Three goals for Victoria. So the scoreline back to one. 10-8 at the quarter time break to WA. It's amazing what one turnover can do for momentum. High ball. Oh, yeah, gee, I was going to say, big take from Gilbard, forced into the post by Byron. Yeah, a little bit frustrated by that one, Gilbard. I'm not sure that Byron meant to push him into the post. It was a superb feed in, though. Perfectly placed him, created that contact. Hendricks used off the back. Forcing down the line, so they open up. Terrific drive from Melmo to hit the circle edge. Stewie Burton's questioning the umpire why that wasn't a contact. I think it might have just been stronger body in that particular case. Oh, Caught just, slightly off angle. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like the umpire's going to change their mind. You just need to get up and get on with it. And there's so much going on with the intensity of this match. Every contest is tight. Not going to see absolutely everything going on, especially off the ball. So there you go, the warning from the umpire to Josh Byron. So that second time, the contest in the air on Gilbard. We saw the last one where Gilbard went into the post. The umpires... Uh, I'll call that a little bit of sucked into the conversation. Gilbard very much let him know about the first one. So naturally, the second one's going to receive something. I guess the point of difference is, whenever that happens, don't do it twice in a row because you just... Take the it, attention it, away. Take, yeah, take the attention away. Shift your defensive behaviour. And always, by all means, go back to it the next time. Oh, beautiful pickup calls. He saw it was along the ground. Knew he was the only one that was not having to turn for it. This is a moment here. Gilbert started firing up. He's deadly when he's got a little bit of energy like this. Well, he's just found it, hasn't he? Because, of course, McPherson's been the workhorse, hasn't in that first 15 as the lift... Becomes we'll just get an the obstruction. obstruction. Mm. Possibly just to take it. Might have had the hands up just on the takeoff. If he kept them down, I think he would have been safe there. I'd like to see a bit more of that. So, WA after being hunted down by the Vicks. Just push that scoreline out. Gilmar, so much more involved now. Heard sitting out wide, wants the ball. That swung across and a quick release. There's too much on it, though. It was looking good initially off the hand. Just ended up a little bit too much. Heard disappointed with himself for that one. They've been teammates for a long time, Heard and Gilbard. That combination, very good. Yeah, see that Josh Byron little underarm pass for the give and go? Doesn't mind that out of defence. I've just been impressed with the work rate from Melmo when Victoria are transitioning through court. His ability to hit the line. 
and set the attack up has been impressive. How did Alum keep that in? It looked like it was definitely going out of court. He could have let it go out of court as well. He's had to have some big moments, Alum, in the last few minutes. So they break the West Aussies, the Victorians. Two in a row for them, no. Draven Lee Truro says absolutely not. Let's see what the umpire actually calls here. Hopefully oh. it's just for the towel. Yeah, no, it's only for the towel. Oh, no, has oh, given no. a caution. There's a caution. I thought he was already committed to the air before any chance of being able to pull out that contest. He took a great line at the ball. Chad and Cowan just caught blind on it. Well, I guess the reality here is, is that as the game looks more physical, and when I say looks, it may not necessarily be, but it looks more physical, the umpires are going to start to call what they need to. It's now the job of the players to adjust. Yep. Game management ultimately comes down to the players. You've got to sort yourselves out so you're not getting those cautions and moving up to warnings or further. Back to one goal, the difference. The Vicks trailing by one, 3.50 on the clock before we hit the big break, the halftime mark. Who goes in with their nose in front? Another overcooked ball from Rawling, so that's two off his hand to Gilbert. This defence from Victoria has really picked up in the goal third. Their intensity... Even the way they're looking at driving this out, a bit more about it. Keep your eye on Melmo, though. He's been the one. They've got all attention on him at the moment. Heard draws a contact to his name. And he's just changing direction, constantly going, I'm going to keep going until they've either overcorrected me and opened up another space, or I'm getting it. Very good at bringing it out, Melmo. I feel like the momentum has shifted the way of the Vicks here. Whistle... Seemingly going their way as such as a quick give and go along the base from Connor Rawlings. Well, not Connor Rawlings, my problem. Jaden Cowling, should I say, into Brody Roberts. And so the scores are level and the centre pass going with the Victorians. We spoke about momentum shift. Where all of a sudden when you got four in a row with your centre pass, that is a true momentum shift. Tough ball given. Just saying, wait another moment, please because Brody Roberts will come flying through. He's very good at taking them, but just give him a moment to land. Absolutely. Plenty of time. Allen, good strong take. Yeah, much too short there, cool. Beautiful block, but you're only a foot away, buddy. And so Cameron Allen puts the Vicks in front. Two minutes to play. It was WA that was up by two a quarter time, and now Malmo gets a piece of it. And it goes the way, the Victorians. And the call must have been for the one where it was with Malmo because Richardson definitely came over the arm afterwards. So there's Richardson, again forced to go cross-court and backwards through Hendricks. Just trying to direct play Richardson point and saying go back and then we can set something else up. See Brody Roberts sitting out wide, far side of the court. Two on one inside. And then Dan calls the clever and clean tap over the top to Draven Lee Tarua. We haven't seen a lot of those taps from Cool so far. It says a bit about the feeds that have come in. It, it's been Draven Lee Tarua who's been more of the hands. They share the workload so well in that circle. Though. Talk about defensive combinations. They are, those two are one of the best. So Cools from his deflection, having to work as the backup at the line. Just over a minute to play here. Take this opportunity to clean up. Very sweaty when those boys hit the ground. Here's the towel boy coming on. Letting everyone know he is doing the towel boy job as well. Signals to the crowd. <laughs> Has no idea where to clean up, mind you. If you're going to do a towel boy job, be ready to be exactly where you need to be. Good on you, Dylan. And Melmo gives him a nice little pat on the back saying thank you as well. So Rawlings, good strong drive to the ball, draws the contact on Melmo. Oh, look at the arms inside the circle. Hendricks and McPherson both fighting so hard for the ball. Well, I reckon the Hendricks move's been critical because McPherson's nowhere near been in the play as much as he owned that first quarter. We haven't seen him loose on that goal line in particular at all this quarter, I don't think. I'm willing to be corrected on that from someone at home if it occurs. So who gets the bragging rights at halftime? We're 19 apiece, 33 seconds on the clock as Roberts offloads with his shooting partner, Alan. 
Moving the ball nicely, the Victorians. And then, oh, gee, a late one, and it was into the hands of Cools. Offensive contact, so 20 seconds. They've called time on the clock, and they're going to advance the penalty. I'm not sure there was anything deliberate about that. He went to defend them really. Oh, that was me who got called for the contact. I think it's just the umpires trying to control this at the moment, and you've got to, you've got to give them credit for that. And players need to respond, and that's what Hendricks has just done. Loose ball. Managers says go offside there, trying to balance. But this is very crucial, Victoria, going into the break, so, especially after that yeah, contact. Yeah, Roberts puts them in front right on the tick of the siren. So a terrific second quarter turnaround for the Victorians. Trailing by two at quarter time. And just after another 15 minutes of play, now find themselves in front by a solitary goal. Expected to be close this game. The second time they've met at this tournament. We go into the big halftime break. And it is the Victorians over WA leading by one. Having a pretty good season this year, Andy. By the look of this lot, you are too. Well, we've got a good team out in the field. You want to go meet them? Sure. So what do you grow here? We've got broccolis, collies over there, carrots, you name it. We harvest it today, catch. And it's in the stores tomorrow. So you guys are the midfielders of the fruit and veg. At Spotshed, we grow it. We sell it. You save. Giving this season everything we've got. Just try and stop us. Don't miss the excitement of West Coast Fever at RAC Arena. Tickets on sale now at ticketech.com.au. Giving this season everything we've got. Just try and stop us. Don't miss the excitement of West Coast Fever at RAC Arena. Tickets on sale now at ticketech.com.au. Welcome back to our live coverage here of the Amna Championships coming to you from the Bendat Stadium here in Perth, WA. 
Half time, just about done and dusted as WA and Victoria go head to head. Victorians leading by one, a great fight back in that second quarter, trailing by two and now have their nose in front. Big shout out to the Amna Championships supporters, and that is Bladen WA. Great temptation, sweet treat, spud shed, West Coast Fever, and Netball WA. Of course, WA Sports Performance, a proud partner of the West Coast Thunder as well. The boys have been getting some terrific recovery. Located in Willardon, Wasps, premier strength and conditioning sports injury rehab facility. So shout out to all of those helping these sides come together for this big tournament. 30 minutes of netball to play here. If you've just joined us, second time they've met at this tournament in day four. It was day two in the evening session. And the Victorians too strong on that occasion, a five-goal victory. And now the WA side working hard to come back into it. Matthew Blomley joining me as our expert commentator. A couple of changes. Yeah, WA have brought on Elliot Clark into goal attack. Matt sees Dylan McPherson return to a more traditional position for him in centre. We've also seen a bit of a change in the goal circle defensively. Cools moves in to keep it. Dan King, sorry, there's a Dan King from another state as well. Robert King into goal defence. Expect a lot of hands from him as well. Victoria, just the one change. Al Punchin returning into goal defence. Well, it's a big crowd unfolding here coming in to watch this game. Interestingly tonight, I can see all of the West Coast Fever athletes. Janiel Fowler has just entered the stadium. Courtney Bruce, a lot of the players here to watch. Well, they're watching their training partners for one. And... People they train against quite regularly in the rest of the West Coast boys. So no changes for the Victorians as Brody Roberts drops in an easy one for him. So there's Clark newly onto the court and straight into the hands. Riley Richardson read the cross-court ball beautifully and then has to go long. Surely that's a WA ball. Somehow not. Oh, dear. Well, Dan Cools had it for the taking. But Robert King thought he might be able to get a hand to it. And Roberts convinced that the goal's already going in, then realised, oh, maybe I should go and help my teammate out just in case. So, turnover ball it was for the Victorians. Bit of throw with hope, that last one, Richardson, but you take those wins. Punching, should I say. Mate said no changes, but that's incredible. Hendricks has gone to the bench. Perhaps trying to keep legs there in the goal defence position, knowing they've had moving goals. So, quick transition, WA McPherson into the middle. He will be the absolute captain of the ship in there. Elliot Clark demanding front ball. Expect a lot of lower balls to go into him as well. He does play a very low game traditionally. There'll be low balls also from him to Gilbart. Interesting to watch how the Victorian defence decides to tackle this, though. How much attention they pay to Clark versus Gilbart. And how aware they are of, as a player in that position. Lovely open at the top of the circle from Hurd. McPherson into the pocket. Clark hustling along the baseline. Some terrific swaps inside the circle going oh, on. There you go. There's a great example. Paying all the attention to Gilbart and Clark opens up on the baseline for a gimme under the post. That's that baseline that was free in that first quarter. Punch and Byron got to get that communication to shut down that. Draven Lee Tarua rolls on to goal attack. Elliot Clark only a couple of minutes, but they were impressive. Just that one cross-court ball, bit wayward. Yeah, I dare say that uh, Draven just wanted a quick couple of minutes break. He did look like he was going to be taking that bib at the break. Very different lineup this will be in there now. Expected a lot more exciting footwork. Draven, very nice goal. We're all used to seeing him with the hands in defence. Well, it becomes a one-on-one -on -one game, surely, because two threats now for two real threats for WA in Tarua and Gilbart. Really brings up an aerial threat as well. Mm. He's going to be able to get up there for a high ball. So, levelled. The scoreline at 23 piece. Richardson back through Punchin. Allen right out of the circle. Just missing that circle edge again here, Victoria. A oh, quick offload from Roberts. It's a lovely change of direction on the baseline. Good connection with Cameron Allen. McPherson. 
Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah, on just... that step back around. He's got to be careful that he's not actually stepping into, into someone that already got the space Correct. there. Did very well to keep his feet given the body contact. Josh Byron doing everything he can there. Good front position defensively. Beautiful hop into space as well. Draven, Lee Tarua. Forced to go, weren't they, through Tarua on that occasion. Oh, we've had a change for Victoria in the middle as well. Jake Noonan replacing Riley Richardson. Just inject something a little bit different in there. Also, give a chance for Richardson to maybe have a seat, have a look at what's going on again. Reset, he'll be able to find his feet and be back in it. Well, he's still standing up on the side of the court. So, yeah, no, he's now moving down to the bench, Riley Richardson. So, Noonan with a chance here to impress for the Vicks. Gilbert swings. Tarua, well, too easy and too much space for Draven Lee Tarua. But the work from Gilbert there that helped create that space. Correct. He beautifully blocked out with his backside. Very good at that. Does it quite quietly. Very sneaky. Oh, Ooh. gee. Close to the three seconds, wasn't it? Nothing Absolutely coming forward. Absolutely with that. And the rebound goes to King. The big cheer from the crowd. They'll have to reset the penalty, though. It wasn't set. It's not often I say this, but Robertson needs to lift his work rate, I think, in the attack end. They're begging for him to punch through. It's just not coming just yet. You're allowed to say it. You're an expert. McPherson, quick give and go through the middle. Tarua out wide. Thought about the swing and then just the off look to the shooter in Gilbard. I think just the left eye turned then oh, for that even, moment. I don't even know if it even turned at all. The old, Stunning pass. The old look away. Loves a moment, does Lee Tarua. Just got one. And if you sh saw what the arms were actually doing then, he gave that away. He signaled that much earlier than what the face was ever going to do. He's just done it again. Oh, gee, too much on it. So, oh, look, he loves his moment, doesn't he? <laughs> Lee Tarua. He's lit up that goal circle. He's popped the West Aussies in front and a chance now to break that scoreline out. Three two, in a row for them. Goals. Yep. So a three goal run for the Thunder. This injection of Lee Tarua has been terrific. Created a very different shooting circle. They're finding that circle so much easier and seemingly with less work. Well, under pressure defensively from McPherson and Burton. Allen's out wide and free. It's an important goal here for the Vicks. Patience required. And there it is. Yeah, late challenge from King. Needed to pull out of that one. A bit better patience from the Victorians. Finding circle edge a little bit earlier. Well, it was a critical moment for them, really. And they didn't want the West Aussies to have a four-goal run on them. I still want to see someone punching through that middle. Western Australia are essentially playing a box without it being a strict box. No one's recognised it. No one's doing anything different there. Got to know what your opposition have changed their tactics to so you can adapt as well. So seven minutes left to play in this third quarter. 10-8, it was the WA side by two. And, of course, the Vicks turned that around to a one-goal lead at halftime. And now the Thunder with ball in hand, the West Aussies. A chance to go two in a row. It's a missed ball and a big rebound. That's a Byron. rare opportunity. Yeah. Punchin has to go back to Byron. So good defensive transition pressure from Thunder. Again, four balls, five balls in that third. Look at this moving spatial defense that's going on. They're still playing a form of man, but it, they're giving a bit of room and they're just pushing it across where possible, taking up any space that Victorians are trying to go through. We've also seen a change here for, in the wing defence for Victoria. Young Ronan Pring, only very young, came up from the 23s, replacing Tim Melmo, obviously wanting someone to fly a little bit more there. Roberts, baseline. Hands are a little loose from Ellen. Stays in play, though. Somehow manages to look like that was just a natural move for him. Brody Roberts just needed to sink that mid-range one. Normally you'd back him in every day of the week from there. 
Just couldn't quite find it. Oh, this quarter has certainly lifted a notch in intensity. McPherson driving through court. Long offload. Great vision to Gilbard. Hits the top of the circle. And Tarua. That was a tough ball. Al Punchin had read it. Couldn't quite get there. Oh, just the misfeed from Jason Hurd. Haven't said that at all this quarter. He's been very good with the hands. So Victoria again creating some good pressure in the goal circle only to throw it directly into the hands of the West Aussies. I'm not quite sure why no one's just going to find a body and driving off and keep it simple. Well, it's the pressure of the moment, isn't it? The fatigue that starts to set in. Identifying what's happening in front of you is one thing. Oh, gee, and then Gilbert. Almost a gimme ball for Pring. Well, this real reluctance for Gilbert to want to shoot from anywhere except directly under the ring. And which anyone at home, if you know him as a goaler, can, can shoot, shoot from, any from anywhere. Can shoot from anywhere. This time it's Tarua. Oh, lucky to rim in that one. Very, very high release. So holding the two-goal lead, WA. Opening up the court far side using the width here. Roberts, middle. And then good offload. Yeah, Dan Cool's caught in the back space. And worth noting, that was a long time between goals in that last passage. That's another thing that helps the brains switch off a little bit when you're going back and forth. Ping-pong netball, don't want to see that. Yeah, very low scoring, isn't it? Just 28, 27 goals. Just over 50 goals scored in three quarters. It says so much about the defensive pressure from both sides that's going on. So much in each centre third, each goal third. I'm just not sure how they're going to get the ball through without trying a different tactic either side. Lovely offload from Jake Noonan into Allen. Perfectly spaced pass. Do not underestimate that workload that Roberts was just doing there. I said he needed to lift it. He may not have touched the ball, but he created that play completely. Wayward ball from Lee Tarua into Gilbert. So the Vicks here can level score on an effective long court transition. Well, Cowling. Defensive pressure just dropped off from... WA, I don't know if they were trying to play a really offline zone, but there wasn't the intensity of the previous passages. Offside the call. Backspace, there it is, Allen. Might have been a little arm yeah. on that one. Well, the umpire didn't see it, and so it is play on. We certainly had a very good vantage point to see it at this end, so we tie the scores up again. The Vicks fighting back, and we'll have the centre pass their way with 2.30 to play in this third quarter. Punchin goes back to Pring. Cross court now. Finds Noonan. Fresh legs on. Cowling just needs to find that ball a little bit sooner. A little bit less shoulder work. A bit more with the feet. Just like that one. Lovely turn. Too much on it. Allen. He will keep it in. Oh. Unbelievable. Somehow ball kept in play. No foot was out. Yeah, it must have been just across the line, that one. He's so athletic. Very deceptive, Alan. Beautifully looking over the mess there, McPherson. He's so good from giving that long ball out to fence. They've really missed him in that midcourt, and you can see the difference it's making. Oh, coming out, punch, and flat-footed was Lee Tarua. Just slapped it down, didn't he? Almost a basketball bounce to a teammate. To the top, Noonan's there, and then just the patience, wasn't it, to find the feed to Allen. He really sold that he was going to give that ball up top or over. Open, stunning pass. So the Victorians hit the front. It has been a topsy-turvy third quarter. They fought back in the latter part. Just caught chicken wing in there, Jake Noonan. It's a tough one against a body like McPherson. He's going to get in and around you. 
Litaru, no confidence to go from that mid-range. Gilbard this time, though, steps in, finds an easy one for him and levels the score with just under 45 seconds now to play. Again, we say this, who goes in with their shoulders back, if at all, at the final break? Well, based on that, I'm going to be saying thunder. <laughs> that is a crucial moment where Victoria had the opportunity to keep it with the centre pass as they needed to. They have to get a turnover and look at scoring. At the very least, you want to be maintaining this quarter, not have lost the quarter. Dylan Matha comes on there in a goal defence for the last minute of play. McPherson. So Ryan King takes a quick rest. Almost like a specialist ice hockey change, that one. Bring on your defensive team. Mm. Plenty of time here on the clock to score. Lee Tarua goes one more pass. Got to be careful. The more refeeds that you give, the more chance you're given to throw yeah, it away. Well, Almost did. Somehow kept that ball in play. Toys with the clock, but eventually finds the goal. And as the siren goes, the West Aussies will go into the final break with their nose in front by a solitary goal, winning that quarter after trailing by one at the halftime mark. A terrific 45 minutes of netball here at Bendat Stadium and a blinding 15 to come. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after the break. Well, I hope you're enjoying your afternoon of netball on the live stream here. National Championships unfolding in Perth. Halfway through day four, we've hit. And gee, what a game we've got here. Another 15 minutes to play to find the winner of this match. Anyone would think it was a final, the way things have been going. 30 to 31, a very low scoring affair on the WA side. Oh, just the one goal in front. Plenty of momentum shifts, though, hasn't there been throughout the game? Oh, the number of goal runs that occurred for both sides. They're three, four runs, and then they're getting it back. But it's a defensive pressure from both sides that really has made this game. That's why you're seeing such a low-scoring game. There is immense defensive pressure. Up to two minutes between goals is incredible. Yeah. We have seen a change for WA, just the one. Rawlings coming back on into wing attack position, like seeing him blooded. Still got Mather in goal defence after finishing that quarter. Vicks have also made change. Hedricks returns the goal defence bib. Tim Melmo in goalkeeper. Interesting change. Melmo was doing a load of work out the front in that wing defence role, particularly in bringing ball through court. So he gets to take on Gilbert. 
Gerard Murphy calling in some of the changes. And you just wonder whether that might be a sign of confidence from Gilbard. And the way he took that ball over the top. The crowd are up and about. And this is normally a great sign. It, while she can't see it on the camera, Gilbard is right up at that transverse line. He does that when he's up and about. Roberts, front position. And a little quiet in that third quarter for my liking. Look for him to step up here. He doesn't take quiet for long. No, and, that, and that's, a, that's an ominous sign, isn't it, for Victorian fans? He's scary when he's on song. We saw that for Australia. He played MVP efforts in multiple games. Finds a way. Good players find a way. Just getting caught, Melmo, with the drop into the hand. Raven Lee Toro is going to be too smart for that. He's going to really show that contact call. Noonan finds Cowling out wide. Have to go back to the line. Melmo there, though, and ready for it off Pring. Good deep ball to Roberts. The look away, and it was eaten alive, wasn't it? The problem was By we course. all knew that was coming. Yeah, everybody, including the commentators. Brody Roberts does that pass regularly. If he kept the eyes, I think it may have actually been on because he would have been able to sell a little bit longer. This is a confidence moment here for Western Australia, though. Up and about at this crowd and the bench. Oh, Jerome Gilbard. Well, what push, a leader. Yeah, they pushed the scoreline out to three. Victorians now are asked the question. Bring goes flying, and it's enough to bring Melmo into it. And that's what he's there for, to really have a go at that loose ball. That he's not a flyer like you see in an Al Punchin or a Byron, but, geez, he can cut the line of the ball beautifully. Noonan, you can see Noonan just sitting out here along the line. Really patient and poised has he been since coming on. And that's what they needed after a few long passes had been thrown away. Just a different settling option there. I just feel like he changes the tempo nicely for the Victorian attack. Yeah, very different style player to Riley Richardson. And both have such a role they can play in this mm. side. It's great being able to have different styles. Roberts at the top has to look around. Nothing on offer. Goes back to Hendricks who was patiently waiting at the line and then just overcooks the pass. The intention was good there. Roberts was trying to be patient. Just unfortunate to throw that away, but great opportunity here. Thunder push out their lead. So it's a contact by Roberts. Matha. Oh, look at that. Yeah, clever drive, strong drive from Connor, Wall Connor Rawling, should I say. Drew Melmo out. I'm really enjoying watching him play. Yeah. He's really coming alive each game. Watch out for him within a couple of years. Still only young. Alum out. And we have seen a change in that goal circle. Tom Hardwick. Maybe a chance for Brody Roberts just to have a look. Great opportunity for Hardwick. His first year in the open men's competition. Well, fresh legs. Very important. Nice outside arm, Melmo. The ball will be Thunders, though. Just a little bit quiet out in court defensively now, Victoria. Oh, gee. Well, McPherson was falling backwards. And Melmo, just terrific footwork to get front space and hand to ball. Comes up with it. So trailing by three, the Vicks. Long court ball. Again, back to the line. Late contact, Lee Tarua. Just nice patience there for Cowling. That's what we need from him. But someone's still got to punch through that middle. Can't sit out wide and just wait for it. Got to still drive. Beautiful ball in. Oh, beautiful from Noonan. Been impressed with him. So he bring the scoreline back to two and centre pass for the Vicks. Alum goes back to the line to Hendricks. Need a hit circle edge here, Victoria. It's very difficult to feed from off it. With all of those hands, as we see, Stuart Burton comes up with it. So Thunder. Some defensive menacing down one end. Can it result in a goal at the other? Contact call comes on Pring. Look to this go post. 
Hendricks called for the contact, though. Interesting Gilbert. offload. We'll go to the man that's the sure thing, right? Well, once he's on, <laughs> you, there's pretty much no question in Gilbert often. He doesn't miss many ever. Oh, take him in every day of the week, as he does just then. So out to their three-goal lead again, uh, the WA Thunder side. They lost to the Victorians by five earlier in the week. This will be a turnaround for them. The Victorians also here with an opportunity to take some risk defensively and see what they can do. Oh, Gilbert, really aggressive push on his own player, showing that he wants the ball. Get there now. Lee Tarua, mid-range shot. It goes all the way to the heavens and drops in. Did not look like missing. Brought down some rain with it. Perhaps that's the rain we've been seeing here in oh, WA the last couple of days. Well, a home alone moment for Cameron Allen. Sitting, waiting out wide. Beautiful long ball. Lovely ball. And that's what the Vicks need to do. Score quickly and get straight back into defence with all the energy to try and spoil. Well, you're going to try and spoil that home party is what you're trying to do. We don't want, as Victorians, we don't want WA in the home win. But WA, they're certainly doing everything to make sure it's going to be that way. Oh, threads the middle. Opens up Noonan out wide. Quick oh, swing at the angles. top. Well, there you go. That is textbook triangle work just there. The pass was potentially on to Hardwick early, but it opened up a beautiful post ball. Put that one in the teaching manual, I say. Tarua uses the width with McPherson. Almost an unnecessary spin, but I'm here for it. <laughs> Getting ready for Amna presentation night, perhaps. <laughs> that was a lovely spin. Maybe he's hearing music. I'm not. Keep going. Oh, I'm out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It's good that we can find a moment to be comedic in amongst the pressures of what's unfolding on the court. Wow, what a ball. Oh, look, another beautiful width, depth, angles used by the Victorians. Maybe underestimating Hardwick a bit here, WA. They, they know what to expect from Brody Roberts. They know his patterns. Hardwick, they don't know anywhere near as well. Found him post, what, two, three times now. Plenty of time. Plenty of time for the Vicks to find some ball. And just as I say, it, Hendricks gets his hand to it. And beautifully picked up by Rawlings. Yeah, Rawlings. He saw where it was going. He moved his feet before that had been passed as well. Hustling hard to the ball was the wing attack for WA. That workload from Gilbard. We speak about how much it's lifted. He is the majority scorer by a bit in this quarter over anyone. Oh, gee, a big look at that ball from Dylan Mather, but wasn't able to get there. I think this might be called for deliberate delay. So a caution to Stewie Burton on the outside of the circle. I'm going, I, is that the way you took that? Yeah, that's the way I took it. It's just for getting the hand in, stopping the feed. I dare say you're not going to see another one of those anyway. Did well to stop the ball from going straight into Alan's hands because he'd had the good little refeed. Neil Bard and Lee Tarua just go. Always going straight back to him. Shooter to shooter. The defence knew it was going back to him, still couldn't quite get there. And a finish. So the last few minutes have seen WA hold this four-goal lead. Just over five minutes of netball to play. As Stewie Burton comes through, but it's Noonan that picks up the deflection off his own pass. Yeah, you can see the job he's been doing in the gym for the gun work. That is what is getting in the ball. But tip again. Everywhere plays. Those long balls that weren't coming off earlier in the game, all of a sudden have opened because we're creating some dis defensive areas. I'm not sure that the defensive circle is working quite as well for Thunder either. Back space. Beautifully taken. And then a the quick offload to Gilbert. So, so goal, good on yeah, that pop. Goal for goal at this point in time. Fix need to not only score off their centre pass, but try and find some defensive moments. And there's another long ball. Well, three in a row might be just a little too ambitious. 
And, and it did look like it was on. He almost ripped it in, but cleaned it up, did Stewie Burton. Yeah, but the golden rule, right? You don't get to do things that often. You've got to, you've got to go back to doing the hard stuff before you get the glory. Yeah, once, twice, the third yeah, time, generally yeah, not on. Yeah. So this can be a very punishing goal in the scheme of this game. Oh, well, if you're pushing it out to five, that's a very difficult target to be getting back, even with four minutes to go. Yep. Especially with how low scoring this match is and the defensive pressure we've seen for the entire, well, leading up to 60 minutes. So a Victorian centre pass has been spoiled at one end. And Draven Lee Tarua can push this scoreline out to a five goal or five goal lead and thunder centre pass. Well, that Make long ball, I hate to say it, but that long ball could have been the punishing ball of this game. And that could have been a, the turnaround point. It, yeah, it was an unnecessary ball. A little deflection from the Vicks, but the hustle by the WA side here. Back again. Look Burton. at the intensity that's out there. Really strong takes needed. McPherson letting them know that the contacts are good. He received a couple of knocks in a row. A strong contest. Rawlings looks around. Wasn't really sure where to go. Saw the backspace to Gilbard. And it's a miss from the man that doesn't miss. And then an obstruction call. So all of this is eating the clock away for the Victorians. And the biggest lead of the game now. Three goals in a row for Thunder. And a six-goal lead to WA. Pring again backwards to Melmo. Someone's got to drive through this. This is what they struggled with earlier in the match, Victorians. People just kind of sitting wide. That's what you want from Pringer. Drive straight through the middle. But another flyer up is what you need. People standing still. That's well, what's given them that ball. It's eventually worked. It was close to a hell ball, but they've forced the Victorians into their own foils, haven't they? And McPherson, you think he's only playing on day one. The energy he's just found. And Gilbard, he's really stepped up, especially this second half. Well, they've just controlled the attack pa passage there, haven't they? Complete control. And the finish comes from Lee Tarua. And so WA have found a way to push this scoreline out in the crucial minutes of the game. Seven goals the difference. A chance to go eight. Too much on that from Gilbert. And make no mistake, each of these goals have been really hard work for from both sides. Those ones, last, last four goals from Thunder took almost a minute each to happen. Yeah, That's wow. not often we see that at this level. Nope. Ring, driving through and it's a footwork call so just not falling the way is it for Victoria. WA now can just control proceedings. Sutton comes on a minute and a half to go. He's been sitting on the sideline for the last two minutes. It shows how much that pressure has been there. They haven't been able to do their rolling sub they want. And straight away he gets a contact call. Just use the hip a little bit too much there. Expect a really patient last minute and a bit here from WA. We've got no need to rush whatsoever. Well, it had been a blow-for-blow blow battle with a few momentum swings throughout each quarter. But it's WA whose pressure defensively has been able to get them the lead that you're looking at now. And a couple of poorly executed passes along the way from the Vicks. That was a two-on-one at the transverse line. It's difficult enough to sometimes take the one-on-one -on -one there. You've got nowhere to lead into. Poor choice. 40 seconds to play. Swing cross court finds Noonan. Quick ball into the backspace. And the Victorians through hard, hard week. Finish off the goal. 26 seconds. It'll probably be the last roll of the dice here. WA crowd cheering what's actually going on on the other court there. Their kids keeping a close match over there. Very exciting times. All about what's happening here though, isn't it, Matt? WA, you get a feeling these two sides could meet again as the finals unfold. But five seconds to play. WA will milk the clock right to the end. And a dominant fourth quarter and a goal on the siren from Lee Tarua. Sees WA Thunder turn their form around against Victoria from a five-goal loss on day two to a nine-goal victory 
here on day four. It was a terrific game, wasn't it? Some big moments from both sides, some runs of goals. But I think it was the rotation of Thunder's line with Lee Tarua forward and their ability to hold defensively probably the winning move for the Thunder. Absolutely. That was masterstroke by Loran Ward, pushing Draven down in. In that last quarter, nine goals apiece, I think it was. My calculations may be incorrect. Where Jerome Gilbert stepped it up as well. I would say Thunder in control majority of that match. There was only the one time Victoria had the true lead at a quarter break, and that was at the end of the second quarter. Bit of, bit of back and forth going on. There were some lead changes. WA, their intensity, if they can keep that going, those extra five minutes, extra seven minutes across the match, that lead all of a sudden might be a bit, little bit more. Mm. Well, there you go. It was a terrific game for our men's open. Back-to-back -back games, early game with South Australia and Queensland. Queensland getting the victory. And now WA take a victory over Victoria. I hope you're enjoying all the streaming action coming to you from the Emna Championships here at Bendat Stadium. And for now, it is goodbye from Matthew Blomley and Sue Gordian. Bye for now.